Doing Excel podcast episode 52, look up two values. Well, hey, welcome back to the Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Uh, great question sent in uh, from YouTube this week. How do you do a lookup when there are two lookup values? So, uh, they want to be able to choose a date here and then also choose a person. So, for 10, 4, October 4th, 2010, and Tina. Uh, we want to return the 275. How do we get the 275? You know, in my initial reaction here, Mike, was to use a concatenated key uh, where we take uh, the date and the uh, the rep and join that together over in column A. And then uh, when we do our V lookup, we could look up the concatenation of F2 ampersand G2 uh, and do it as. Uh, just like a regular VLOOKUP at that point. But, you know, I wasn't sure if we were allowed to add an extra column. They didn't say that in the problem. So I said, all right, let's see if we can solve this somehow without adding the extra column. And so I'm going to use a uh, uh, trick that came along in Excel 2007 called some ifs. Some ifs says, hey, we're going to go add up all of these values over here in column C. We'll press F4. And pairs of criteria. Now, first pair of criteria is look through all of the dates over in column A and see if that's equal to cell E2. Next pair of criteria, look through all of the dates in column B and see if that's equal to Tina, the sales rep there, and we get our 275. So there's the formula. Some ifs, uh, we're adding up all of these values in C and checking to see if the date in A matches E and if the name in B matches F. Uh, let's just try it here. We'll change from uh, Tina to Sue and you see that we get the 373, so that's working. All right, so now, you know, usually VLOOKUP will return only the first value, and I guess the one problem with this, may be a problem, may not be a problem, is that if uh, Tina was in there twice for October 4th, it's going to add up those values. Might be what they need to do. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I love that sum ifs because there are other functions like sum, product, d sum, d get that we could use to match two criteria and get a value. But sum ifs is the fastest calculating amongst all of those. Now this does require you don't have any duplicates and we don't here. Hey, uh, so sum ifs is great, but if you don't have 2007 or 10, how about the d get function? D functions are database functions. D get is just one of them. There's D sum, uh, D get, and a few others. It means please go get a value. So database, your database has to have field names at the top to identify the columns, comma, and then the field, you either have to type it in or click on it. That's the field with the value you want to return. And criteria, you got to actually put the field names typed into cells and the two criteria below, this means and, both of these, this and, this has to match. Um, and this sometimes is a drawback because not all, the, in, not all templates that you build do you want to actually type out all the criteria with uh, field names. But nevertheless, for this example, that will do it. If I do this drop down right here, we can get the same value. So if you're in earlier versions and you can't do some ifs, then use this. Now, what if this, um, let's look at this example back here that Mr. Excel did. This is awesome. If these values were not numbers, but they were text, absolutely beautiful. You add an extra column, and you could see right here when you uh, join, I'm going to hit the F9 key, you can see it actually creates a single value from two. So you take two criteria and make it one, escape. And then this VLOOKUP, totally beautiful. Lots of people know VLOOKUP, this is a great solution. Now, let's just look at a hypothesis. What if you had words here? You were not allowed to add an extra column. What in the world would you do then? Let's uh, take a look, here's a little data set, and we want to return the project. Well, we can use the lookup function index. An index is great. You can just say, hey, these are the items I want to return, comma. And now all we need is the row number, right? So for Sue, that's um, this one. That's like the ninth uh, value in this data set. 
So what are we going to do? Well, we can use the match function, M-A-T-C-H. Match can take criteria and actually tell you the row number. So the lookup value, just like Mr. Excel's V lookup, we join. And just like his extra column, you join the values right directly in the formula. Comma, and the difference here is we're not going to add the extra column. We're going to, uh, in essence, create that extra column by joining this column, and then Shift-7 to get the ampersand this column. Now if you highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see sure enough it creates a single column with our values. Now when you put, when you do an ampersand on two um, columns like this, you actually create an array. So we're going to have to use Control Shift Enter for this formula. Finally we have to put 0 for match. And that, so the match function right here, if I go like this and hit the F9, it delivers the row number. Control Z, and then I close parentheses on the index. And because we created an array, you have to hold Control Shift and Enter. So you actually have to enter that uh, with the keystrokes Control Shift Enter. And that curly bracket means Excel uh, understood that it's an array formula. Now, if I change this, it looks like it's working. Now, uh, one final uh, note here: if I copy this, and I'm going to paste it down here, right? If you didn't like doing Control Shift Enter. There's one further trick we could do. We could take this um, part of the formula, which is the part that's requiring that we Control Shift Enter, and if we put it inside the index function, it'll actually work without Control Shift Enter. I'm going to Control X, and then I'm going to type. Now look at where we are. We're right here. I'm going to type index again. Now two things that are awesome about the index. If you look at this screen tip, it says array. That means it can handle an array. If you look up in help, it also will tell you. So I can plop that right there, and it will work. Now, but, but we need the whole column, right? Comma. Row number. You usually put 3, 4, whatever. But if you leave it blank, it delivers all the rows. So I'm simply going to close parentheses. Now look at this. All we did is put that uh, ant joined two columns inside the index with an extra little uh, comma, and when I hit F9, no way. It creates that same column, Control Z, but we don't have to Control Shift Enter. So when I hit Enter, just Enter, there's no curly brackets there. That will work. All right, uh, for our particular application though, sorry, some if wins, it's uh, a built in function, it calculates fastest. All right, I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel. That's beautiful, Mike. You had me reminiscing with dget. dsum used to be my favorite function in the whole world back in the 90s before pivot tables came along. dget, boy, that's a blast from the past. And then the index with the special array format. I've always seen that in the help. Never saw it used. Actually, I think you used it in a dueling once before. Uh, good to see it again. So, hey, and again, if uh, you enjoy these dueling Excel podcasts, check out uh, on Friday, October 29th, 2010. Mike and I will be doing this live. On a free webinar, just go to tinyurl.com, XLTV29. You'll uh, be able to hear us through your computer speakers. Make sure you have some uh, speakers, maybe some headphones. If you're at work, of course, which you will be. All right, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.